Hi everyone, uh, welcome back. Uh, it's time to do a demo for the article that I have recently published on my LinkedIn profile, uh, where I'm going to show you how we can secure our Lambda function uh, using JWT authentication. With the JWT authentication, one of the major uh, advantage uh, is not sending the username and password uh, while we are uh, communication uh, while we are communicating to to the hosted APIs, which might be external to uh, to our network or even our full infrastructure or even internally hosted. So that I think that that's the that's the best uh, uh, security practice that has been implemented in these days and guess what uh, AWS is providing cognito service which allow you to uh, to uh, uh, put the authentication around your lambda function so oh, and you uh, like you know if you don't know about how we can access the lambda function generally we put the apis on top of our lambda function and they are uh, these lambda functions are accessible uh, through the api gateways which actually provide the api endpoint to to the users and they access our lambda function through through the through the api endpoints now there are two types of of api endpoint one are obviously open where you don't need to provide any any authentication and the other one is where we need to provide some sort of authentication it can be username and password it can be uh, authentication token it can be any sort of authentication that can uh, uh, that has configured with with the with the api so upon the authentication it uh, returns us the the results or data otherwise just refuse to to do so so in this demo what i'm going to do uh, i'm going to show you how we can uh, configure the whole architecture like you can see on the screen it's itself is a small solution that we have developed uh, 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 as part of uh, some uh, assignment and now I'm going to show you how you can utilize this this uh, a small architecture in your own day-to-day -day development uh, so as a core process uh, if we look at the steps we first going to develop the lambda function and then we're going to integrate that lambda function with the api so the api can access whatever function we have developed uh, 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 the end user can call the api and get the result through through the that api endpoint and then uh, we can also one thing we can uh, create the cognito uh, service or we can configure it in parallel to the development of AW, uh, AWS Lambda. So there is no dependency like the, the function can be developed while the infrastructure team can configure the Cognito for us. Yeah, but when these two has been uh, completed, then we need to uh, we need to integrate uh, both with the API gateway because if you look at the, the diagram, uh, on one side, the API gateway is going to get the, uh, it's going to connect with the AWS Lambda function. So it knows the, what's, the, what's the actual function behind the endpoint. The second thing, it needs to authenticate that call, which is going to make to the Lambda function through the AWS Cognito service. So these are the two-fold uh, communication that the API gateway will do. So that's why we, we uh, once we our Lambda function and Cognito has been finished we, we can start configuring the api gateway or even either of uh, uh, it has been finished we we can start configuring the api gateway and once we complete the api gateway configuration then we can obviously call the api to test our uh, lambda function access through through the legitimate uh, jwt token so more on it obviously uh, gonna come in the the upcoming video but that that's uh, more like a very high level uh, introduction to to the work that we are going to do and once we finish the whole uh, configuration process what we're going to do we're going to call the the 
AWS Lambda function through the Postman and through an other Lambda function. So we can see how one Lambda function is, is using the JWT token to call an other Lambda function, or even we can use the same Lambda function through the API into our uh, local uh, development environment. It could be Python in your you know real code or somewhere where you are developing, or even if you are using the AWS Cloud9 as your development environment, you can use it there as well. So all are in the in the queue. So, but let's start first with with the with the Lambda function. So if I just quickly jump into uh, my AWS account. So I have this user which I've created for, for this demo. And you can see I have the, the Lambda function. Uh, uh, Lambda is uh, recently uh, I have visited. So it's coming in the recently visited section. Uh, you're quite familiar with, with, the, with the AWS console. If not, I'm going to record a separate video for, for giving you an overview about the AWS console and then we will see uh, if you have any questions please put in your comment but now you can see I have the lambda function already displayed so I can either click it or it's very simple I can just go and search my lambda function and you can see I can uh, I am able to access the lambda service so let's do let me just open it in a new tab I'm going to keep my original uh, dashboard open so lambda function allow us to to create the 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 uh, the uh, development uh, or, or to to build the uh, 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 application or software without considering the or without needing to set up the the uh, the infrastructure what it means that you only need to worry about your software development you don't need to worry about that how the infrastructure is going to be laid out for for your uh, for your uh, underlying environment and this is a great concept we normally call it serverless where you know all you need to focus on okay what's the requirement or what kind of the application you are going to build and all the installation and everything the resource allocation spinning up the server underneath everything is taken care by by the cloud provider which is obviously in this case is going to be aws which is great like it's reduced the time significantly it speed up the dev uh and uh, the great thing with with the with the lambda environment uh in general software development it's not only used there but it also help us uh, uh to integrate different services and you know where we need to set up the workflow we we use the lambda function as an integration point between multiple services so many use cases which are currently used by many enterprises uh we're gonna look at uh, them in in future but right now you can see as soon as i open uh the the aws console is very uh i would say informative like it not only give you a quick uh information about the service and you can see get started you can create a function and if i just go down you can see we have multiple uh, languages available. We have .NET, we have Go, Java, Node.js, and Python. What I'm gonna do today, let me just start with the with the Python. And I'm going to start from the scratch, but we also uh, can use the, the sample code uh, just as a starting point. And we can use the container image if we want to run our code in the in either in the Docker or, or the Kubernetes environment. That, that's just out of the scope at the moment. Let's do the author from the scratch. And what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to call it that uh, my function name is, for example, I'm building the statistical calculation application. And I'm going to use Python 3.11. Yeah, permission, all good. I'm going to keep the default and let me create the. Okay, let me quickly fix that because obviously this is my uh, simple uh, non admin user. So I might need to give it more permission. So let me set up its permission and I'll. I'll restart from, from this point. All right, so I have fixed that. Let me just retry it. Uh, looks better. So generally we keep the permission minimum. 
like you know the uh, the the always the best practice to to keep the permission minimum while you are working in the cloud environment because <clears throat> excuse me cloud is a very different environment first uh, it's it's outside of your data center uh, it's not uh, be, uh, it's not like your local environment where you have a full control imagine you are uh, putting your data center in someone else premises obviously uh, we know that aws microsoft google they are all uh, providing best security around their cloud computing but still there are some some responsibilities which which uh, sits on our end and we need to make sure that we follow follow these practices and one of them that you need to always provide the minimum uh, permission for for any any service or any task obviously sometimes it gets really frustrated like you need to reconfigure uh, stuff but uh, it's always better even uh, initially you have to face these issue but you know uh, it's still better than you know exposing your your uh, uh, your network or your environment to to hackers or 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 uh, 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 or those people who are not legitimate to 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 uh, to access your environment so that's why we always keep the permission minimum in in our cloud environment so now you can see uh, uh, i have fixed the the issue uh, and now uh, we have the environment uh, up and running what i'm going to do uh, i can see we have the starting point as a lambda handler and we have the uh, the uh, json as a, uh, a default import because what we are doing we are returning the the out uh, output uh, in the in the json format so that's why uh, the lambda function has a default library imported which is json now, now what i'm going to do let me quickly because i have already built it what i'll do i'll just go and copy my first function which you can imagine because i'm building this stat package so obviously in this statistic factorial has its own significant so you can see i have built a recursive function uh, i don't worry about this function how it has been built but at the end of the day you can see this function is is uh uh taking a number and returning you the factorial and factorial uh, is used by uh, many formulas in in statistics so just for 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 the for the sake of this demo so you you can easily understand uh, 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 what kind of concept we are trying to uh, uh, to achieve in in here now you can build any of the function and it's more like give you the the base uh, uh, line to to build your own uh, own uh, functionality or on your own application uh, uh, on, on top of it so and what i'll do the next thing i'm also going to all this function and print the result so to keep things simple because obviously the development is not the core uh, uh, target in here we are just trying to show how we can secure our lambda function so what i'll do i'll, I'll just call the the uh, function with a static value get the result and then this result will be returned uh, uh, or print on on the screen we can get this result because you can see this result is coming as part of the output as well so later on we'll see how we can consume or extract that result in the in the calling environment but i think at this stage we are good what we are doing let me quickly explain the function we have developed a python based uh, recursive function calculate factorial we are passing a number variable uh, and i'm in uh, checking the condition on on the on the variable or parameter if it is less than one just return one without anything it just the function is just going to return one to the calling environment but if it is not one uh, or less than one that means either it's going to be equal to one or greater than one then uh multiply the number with the with the an uh, other call which is obviously the calling the same function and reduce the number with one right so what it'll do it will if i i'm passing six so what it does it just gonna do this six multiply by and then it will call the same function for example calculate factorial with five and then once it comes on five it will do calculate 
par with four. And that generally we call in the programming language, we call it recursion. So you can see, and it goes all the way to until unless it's reached to one, uh, it reached to zero. So what it will do once it comes to zero, instead of calling the function again, what it will do once it is zero, it's just gonna return one. And then on top of that, whatever the result is, it's gonna re-multiply all the way to the top. And at the end, once all the multiplications are done, we'll get the factorial of our number. Now, let me quickly show you how it works uh, using the, uh, after deploying it. So let me just deploy. I think it's gonna give me an error because I haven't commented it. Yeah, so with Lambda function, you can see if you change anything, you need to deploy those changes before you test those. Most of the time, and the good thing in here with AWS, if they are actually, as soon as you even put a dot, it's gonna uh, visible that label change is not deployed. That means you are still have the old code active uh, behind, the, uh, behind the scene. The compiler is not gonna take your changes until unless you hit the deploy button. And once you deploy, now you can see the, the uh, deploy button is disabled. Let me hit test now. So in order to test, because Lambda function generally activate on some sort of event, there is, some, there is something that needs to trigger the Lambda function. And that that is more like linked to the event. So we need to, in order to test, we just need to create an event. And generally, once we test it, we create the event by ourselves, like test event. It's going to be private and hello world is a sample template. Don't worry about these things because we are not going to use uh, uh, at this uh, at this uh, demo. Uh, I'm just using the, the static value in my function, so I don't need to pass the parameter. We'll see all these in the in the later video. Let me save it. My event has been saved and now I'm ready to test my function. So you can see as soon as I hit the test, uh, I'm getting the calculated factorial is 720. So if I come in here, I'm printing it and in order to just test uh, from the from the calculator. So let me quickly show you how it works. Uh, I think we have the scientific as well. So if I do six and if I look at where we have the factorial, we have in, in here functions. There we go. So you can see factor of six is 720. So that means our function is working, which is great. So that, that's a quick demo to how to build the, the, the Lambda function in the AWS environment. Uh, in the next video, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna build the, the API endpoint. So generally, now we have this capability. We need to provide the other environment to uh, the, the the opportunity to consume this capability, uh, which we have developed using the AWS Lambda. So in order to do it, that will uh, bring the second part of our diagram, which is a second part of the, the architecture where we are going to connect our AWS Lambda with the API gateway. And that will uh, that will allow us to access the Lambda function through the API endpoint. So it will uh, encapsulate the Lambda function from, from, the, from the calling environment. So please feel free to put any comments or if you have any question, more than happy to answer. I hope you enjoy this video and stay tuned for, for this second part. Thanks for watching.